Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's Most Passionate Wine Program. And today we do a show on a subject matter that I really enjoy. It's one that moves the needles, it's fun, and it's been highly effective for the Vaniacs out there to get wines that are impossible to get. Through the years, we've done some shows called Mailing List Wines. We've never really called it Mailing List Wines, so I'm kind of making it up, but what's happened is we've had wines that were difficult to get, smaller producers, Mott has done his job and linked it up, and you guys got on the mailing lists, and now some of the hotter wines out there, uh, Vaniacs control 50, 60, 70% of the mailing list and really keep it. We like to hoard it. It's our, like our little thing, you know? We get to keep all the good stuff. So, four wines today, all ripping hot. I mean like the hottest stuff. Kind of like two years ago, as hot as the Jonas Brothers were, that hot. These wines are massively sought after, but you don't even realize it yet. It's on the underlining nerdum, and next year or two, with the press that they continue to get, they will become more and more sought after, and as the economy goes in the next direction, which who knows when, but when it does, and people are willing to drop 40, 50, 80 bucks bones, as I like to say, on a bottle of wine, these wines will become extremely sought after, impossible to get, mainly main mailing list and restaurant wines. So while they are somewhat achievable on retail, but more importantly, at no cost, you can get on the mailing list. Let's see what happens with these four wines. Hopefully we find something good, two Pinots, two Cabs, kind of really where California cold wines have gone as Syrahs and Zins have become less important um, to most of the consumers out there. Got some comments, Mott. Matt, thanks for coming in early today. Sure. And bang up this show. You doing good? You had a good weekend? Yeah, I did. Tell, t- tell me a little bit about your weekend. Well, I went out shopping for makeup. Tremendous. Since, since you look amazing. There was such a controversy in the life. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Did you pick up anything nice? A little uh, blush? Little, uh, you are wearing eyeliner. More dudes are. Yeah. Yes, and? But what you do? Anything? Mow the lawn. Did stuff <laughs> Mow the lawn, drank a beer, let the weekend go by. Cool, man. All right, let's read some stuff. A Big Semi says, like the episode, might finally break down and start trying French wines, mostly Cali and Italian, normally. Big uh, Big Semi, that is a huge move and make that Portugal and South Africa and Australia. Mix it up, that's the whole game. And you asked about music TV and all that. Tenacious D, The Food Fighters, TV, No Reservations, True Blood, Supernatural, and Deadliest Catch. Thank you, Big Semi. Lawrence Leachman says, watching True Blood. True Blood getting some love here from the Vaniacs. Uh, And Hung. Wine sounded great but already sold out, so is there gonna be another Thunder Cruise? Announcements were made already by this time last year. There is gonna be another cruise. I've not announced it yet, we're developing the website. The word on the street mod is it's gonna be called the Crush It Cruise. I don't know, somebody told me, maybe myself to the mirror, but uh, we will announce that it's gonna be April-ish of next year. We made sure we stayed away from tax season and the NCAA tournament, so we're in good shape. The date is perfect, details coming shortly. Little comment in here, are you in? Give me a little in in the comment section if you are. Eric Godfrey, you might know that name because several times I've mentioned Eric is the friend that I grew up with in Edison, New Jersey that made me a Jets fan. This guy's very important if you think about the scope of things. Eric says, GB, right off the bat, I have to touch on a personal note. Going back to the Omaha episode, I laughed my face off when you mentioned the green box in your yard. Mott, I had this big electric green box. I know you weren't in Omaha taping. I had a big green electric box that powered like the whole cul-de-sac and I used to like plant, you know, put snakes on it and like, you know, worms and it was R2-D2. We did a whole lot of things with it. He goes, uh, I remember that thing like it was yesterday, sitting on it on cold days to warm ourselves and burning our butts in the summer. So sure thing was so hot. Another great episode, highly unknown and underrated region of Languedoc. Love the fact that you've been nerding it up, my friend. Glad to hear all is well on the home front. Eric, super pumped that you're now working in the wine industry in New York City, so I'll be seeing you very shortly. Uh, James Northcross says, Gary, I gotta say this episode was pretty exciting. I was just searching Wine Library the other day, hoping to find some information on Pic St. Loup. And here is exactly what I was looking for. Question of the day, I just finished mixing the new Proximity Effect record in Rocks TV. I don't have one. James, how old are you? Just leave that in the comments, curious about that. And Slush Puppy says, wow, did you see the guy in front give you the finger towards the end of the show? I loved it. All the Sherlock Holmes movies are really excellent and can be watched over and over again. Trademark it. Oh no, trademarks his smell it first. Slush Puppy always says that, smell it first, I like that. All right, four wines, two Pinots, two Cabs, let's get right into it 
This is uh, the Cobb 2006 Pinot Noir from the Rice Spickback Vineyard in Sonoma Coast, 13.8% uh, owned by Ross Cobb, uh, the winemaker at Flowers. This wine is pricey for Pinot. 60, yes, to Brickishaw Ferguson, six zero dollars. Uh, 405 cases produced, 92 points Josh Reynolds, 90 points Alan Meadows, the Burr Hound, so very high score from him. He's a massively conservative, so great score. 13.8 alcohol is to be noticed. That's a big alcohol content, a small production, and cobwines.com, Mott will find the mailing list link up, link it up, we'll see what happens on the palette. Pretty pricey play for Cobb to come out the bat with a 60 bone play, however, if you start comparing it to top-notch Burgundian wines, it's a drop in the bucket. Now, I'll never say 60 Bones is a drop, but in comparison. All right, good color. Let's give it a sniffy sniff, because that's what we do. Nice little bacon element that hits me right in the nose right away. I also love the gorgeous round strawberries. And it's like somebody cut it up, like just beautiful strawberries, big ones. Great aromatics of the strawberry, little bacon wrapped around it. Almost like pigs in a blanket, but like strawberry shortcake in a blanket. A little light pepper, which is nice as well. Big nose, very Burgundian in its approach. Already shows me why Mr. Meadows is gonna like this. Very classic, a little more terroir driven, not this over the top. Did you pour a little Syrah in there, Pinot Noir? There's a little rose petal as well, a little lilac, violets, a little floral. Let's give it a whirl. This is pretty good. Wow. Um, great mid palate. Just completely bl blown away by the structure of this fruit. It's a little hot, so I do get a little heat, like a, like take a lighter, a little like, you know, puff the magic dragon. Yes, it can be there. It, did, did somebody spike it with a little smear off vodka? Maybe. But it kind of blows off, so it was there for a little bit. Now I'm just tasting the tannins. Almost feels like the stems are in there. You get a little, you know, earthiness, uh, a little, Little tree bark brush, like you know, highway action, right? Little little dirt, little dust and rock and all that good jazz. But it's really towards the end. What you're really tasting up front is this beautiful cranberry strawberry kind of cranberry strawberry cocktail. Because it's not juice, Mott. I don't know if you noticed the Ocean Spray label. Um, medium to full bodied, a little bit more Burgundian on the palate, but still you can taste the California sunshine. This, you know, I would not be confused in a blind tasting to think this is new world. It doesn't come across as an exact old world play, but it has nuances from the old world with the new world, and you get a little bit of a balance. And now you're starting to get into those characters we all love, like you know the people that you know lived in, in Eastern Europe for the first six to 10 years of their lives and now live here, got a little accent, a little charm, a little charisma. This wine brings that. Let me give it one more shot. The fruit is very pure and very clean. I like this wine. I think I'm gonna go right in between the two critics. Rounds 192, Meadows went 90. I'm gonna go 91 on this wine. I like it a lot. Now, 60 is pushing it. If this was 35, 40, I'd be yelling at you to get on the mailing list. My intuition says that as this brand grows in popularity, he'll probably bring out some better value plays, and because it doesn't cost you anything to get on the mailing list, and based on what I see here from the potential, and knowing what he's done with flowers, which is actually bring it back to a little bit normality, which is what I like, I would say this is probably one that you may want to jump on. Um, good fruit, you get a little creaminess on the back end, so it gives a little bit of that strawberry and cream brunch Manhattan flavor that so many people like. It's a solid wine, overpriced in my opinion. 91 points, you know that means I love it, and I like it at least, I'd like it with a plus, but I would probably say at 60 bucks I would balk if my friend asked me push to come to shove, should I buy it? And since all of you are my friends, and you too, Mr. Mott, uh, I would say, mm, but something definitely worth keeping an eye on. All right, let's move on. What we have here is the Kanzler 2006 Pinot Noir. Uh, this wine is 90 points, Josh Reynolds, 48 bones. They sell their fruit to Costa Brown. 
which is a very hot winery. Um, their first release of this wine got a 93 point score in the Spectator. 48 bones, again, far from inexpensive, but compared to the Cobb, you know, you're getting 20% break. Um, now, uh, I'm not as familiar with uh, Gary Stock, oh, excuse me, Greg Stock, the winemaker, um, so I'm excited to see what happens here. A lot of times with Pinots uh, from Sonoma and just this whole movement in Pinot Noir in California, I'm fascinated by the, by the uh, winemaker because they have such an impact of where it goes. Now, one thing I love is the cloudiness. Mark, can you pick this up a little bit? This is a very cloudy play, a little unfiltered action kind of going on uh, in comparison to the last Pinot, so I find that fascinating. Really interesting. Uh, let's give it a sniffy sniff. So right off the bat, the nose is a little bit tighter. There we go. I get a little bit of a stinky play, almost like you know, a little like like a sheep walked into the room and maybe gave a little fart. It's a little earthy, kind of stinky, kind of barnyardy, kind of farm action thing going on. Um, so you know, a little manure, definitely a little stinkified on the nose. Some sour fruit as well, almost like a, maybe, I wouldn't want to call it cranberry, kind of like a, or maybe like a real cranberry compared to cranberry juice. Have you ever bitten a true cranberry? It's kind of sour and not so great. Uh, you get that kind of on the nose. I also get a little bit of a, almost like a, a fruit roll-up kind of component on the nose as well. So there's a little candy fruit, but it's really, really old world on its nose for sure. And definitely a little stinkified. All right, let's give it a whirl. I like this wine even more. Um, so this gets a little bit more old world. You're definitely tasting leather. Really back here, I feel like I've eaten a shoe. There's so much leather action going on back here, which I like, it's kind of gamey. Uh, you know, that classic term that I used a couple years ago where you hit a deer on the side of the road, and uh, you know, you hit a deer, you, go, you pull off to the side of the road, and then you stab the deer with a knife, cut it, and bite that venison, put a little black pepper and strawberries on it, and eat it like a like a mean, awful human being. That's what this tastes like. I've never done that, but some people have. Um, I I like that action. It's very gamey. It's very gamey. I mean, I feel like I'm eating moose meat. Um, you know, you get really interesting kind of subtle cranberry, raspberry. Actually, it's raspberry. Raspberry is what's really singing on this wine. This is good wine. This is really good. The balance is impeccable. Um, it's extremely well made, silky smooth. The balance of oak is impeccable. Um, this is one of the best Pinot Noirs that I've tasted from the Sonoma Coast in a long time, period. Um, I'm gonna score this wine 94 points. This hits my palate perfectly. This is exactly the style of Pinot I like. I like this little black and white pepper kind of combo I'm tasting on the back end as I'm, as I'm just yapping to you. The finish is immense. I mean, the finish is like a two minute, I mean, I'm still, I don't know what the timing is. You can see it better than I can. But I'm now just tasting this layered kind of like peppered beef jerky thing. Like, you know when beef jerky is too much pepper? That's what I'm tasting because I'm still tasting white and black pepper. As I'm yapping away to you right now, still tasting it, finish is for days, great finish. 94 points, absolute must try. If you're into Pinot, you've got to find this. I'm starting to understand why Costa and Brown does so well. This fruit source is impeccable. I have very little knowledge of this winery up to this point. Um, Ian's like, you gotta try this. Um, and uh, and 14.6 alcohol, big number, um, but really, really well con you know, contained. 13.8 and I could taste it, 14.6 and I can't. The flavor profile is much more out there. This is a home, my, try this. This is a home run on, on the biggest level. This is one of the higher scored wines I've given in a while. What do you think? Tell the truth. 
Yeah, it's that old world style. And it's too old world for you. It's too early for old world. <laughs> it's too me. early for the old world. Um, I, I really like it, and I think this is a big home run, and kudos to these guys. I'm definitely going to go try to seek out where they are and visit, and good wine. Mm -hmm. It's a little more balanced than uh, some of the Costa Brown and some of the other stuff that's come out. You like it's, the balance of that? It is very balanced. It's really good. All right, let's move on to some caps. That was a great showing by the Pinots. This might be a good show after. We're, we're, we're heading in the right direction. Don't, don't jinx it. I mean, poo, poo, poo. All right. Kieber. 2006 Napa Cab 149 alcohol content. Uh, this is an interesting little winery. 90. 90 US dollars. Uh, Celia Welch makes this. Uh, Celia Macheski, as you might know her, is married, new last name. And uh, she's the winemaker of Scarecrow, one of the hottest wines in the world. You know, just huge scores from Parker. Um, 99 points, 100 points, I don't even know. Like huge, huge scores. Trades on like Wine Commune and, and all these places for like 500 bones a bottle. Um, so the winemaker's pedigree is immense. Uh, don't know much about the Kieber uh, winery at all. Um, so I'm excited about trying this. As a matter of fact, all four of these are the first time I'm having them. Good color, which I like. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Oak, Oak Monster, please chill. All right, Oak Monster is staying in bay. Wow, very bright nose. Now this smells like I took, do you remember Italian ices? Like the cherry flavor? If you just let it sit there and you let it melt down to just a juice and you just smelled it, that's exactly what this smells like. This smells exactly like artificial ice pop cherry juice. It is really over the top on the nose. But it's kind of charming and it's really intense. It's also integrated. So you take the Italian ice, but you're also gonna take a big pack of purple grape big league chew, take the whole stack of it and bite it, chew it, pull it out and smell it. This is very candy-esque. Smell this, put this in front of any seven to 12 year old right now and they're gonna say, mom, that wine is awesome. I mean, it smells like candy, which could be a good thing. Uh, it could also be a very bad thing. Let's see what happens on the palate. So, a little over oaked for me. Not terrible, but definitely a little too oaky for me. That's fine. Um, very thick. It's a viscous play on the palate, which is great. I like that. A um, little pepperminty, spearminty, eggnoggy. Kind of like there's a spiciness going on in this wine, which I kind of like. It makes it a little charming. No way is this worth 90 bones, first and foremost. You'd have a tough time getting two 20s out of my wallet for this wine. But it's a nice drinking Cabernet. You know, I think you can replicate it by drinking a Gurgage Hills at 42 or a Clopagas at 35. It's got no extra layer of charisma or intensity or anything that makes it special in comparison to the far majority of 30 to $50 Napa cabs. I mean, to compare this to Schaefer 1.5 would be a joke. The Schaefer blows this away. It's got so many more layered flavors. This comes at you with a nice solid blackberry, black currant. I've got some blueberry fruit for you, sir. Thank you very much. I'll eat it, delicious. That'll be $90. Are you crazy? That's the kind of play here. You know, it's solid. It's, it's nothing to scoff at. A classic 87, 88, 89 type point wine. I'll go 80 plus on this, but no way close to 90 bones. Um, you know, borderline ripoff, which I hate to say, but I, I would highly recommend against paying this kind of price for this wine. Now, if you see it, if you've got a, you know, a baller boss and he orders it at dinner, don't be like, oh, I'm not drinking that. I'll take a white Zinfandel over here. You don't need to do that. You know, you can drink it, you'll enjoy it, but at the price point, I think it's a, it's a down. Um, you may want to get on the mailing list. If this is more of the direction they're going, I would say no. <laughs> Are you saying I told you so? Should have kept my mouth shut? Okay, that went really, really bad. Um, let's, 90 bucks, crazy. Um, just 
dancing hair. This is one of the nicest looking packages in a wine I've ever seen. You gotta see this. It's got the rabbits on it. This is gorgeous. This looks like Disney sells it in their stores and you gotta pay 200 bucks just for the bottle. It's a beautiful package. This is their 05 Red. Uh, this is made by Andy Erickson. He makes a little wine called, I don't know, Screaming Eagle. So the winemaker is absurd. Uh, Michelle Roland is consulting on it. It's 58% Cabernet, 24% Cabernet Franc. Big number, I like that. Five Merlot, three Petit Verdot. It's 95 points wine spectator and it's 85 US dollars. It's got a nice little post office box, 853 here. Address dancinghairs.com. Let's see what's going on with the hairs. This has a lot of hype, Mr. Mott. Lots of people talking about these little rabbits. Let's see what's going on. A little snippy snip. Now this is a good nose. You know, really interesting. Coming off of this, this has much more balance on the nose. Now you've, you're dealing with a lot more Cabernet Franc, a little Petit Verdot, so you're gonna have some different things going on. I get a little bit of a, a fall leaves component on the nose. Some black currant, clearly, you know, blackberry and currant, clearly on the nose. There's a little subtle oak, but it's integrated quite nicely, at least on the nose. Almost like little purple pellets. I don't know what that even means, but you know how I talk about like what would purple paint smell and taste like? Almost like little like paint gun, purple colored action going on here. It's like somebody shot a paint gun in here and it exploded. Get a little bit of that, which is quite nice. A little subtle, little leather as well on this, which I like. Let's give it a whirl. Um, this is really good. Um, really good mouthfeel. Great oak integration. Not too over the top. No, ah, no oak monster scaring me, which is always a good thing. But what's even better than that is the intensity of the fruit in this wine is really unparalleled. This really, the when you get blackberries and blueberries that taste this intense, that almost like taste like. You like take that fruit and you cut to the middle of it and you get that core and just taste that. When you get that focus to fruit, you're really now talking about the 100 and 200 and 300 dollar bottles of wine. You're talking about first growth Bordeaux. You're talking about some of the classic all time Schaefer Hillside Select, great vintages of Special Select from Camus, Dominus, some of those iconic California wines. And this dancing here, I'll be darned. I've been wanting to say I'll be darned. I'll be darned. Uh, this wine, is very well made. Great vanilla bean action on the mid palate, which is just perfectly balanced with this kind of mocha coffee black tea. So it's almost like taking your favorite tea shop and a Starbucks and combining them together and then layering blueberries all over them. That's exactly what this wine tastes like. But what it also has is enormous tannin structure that is not bitter, so it's approachable right now. But this wine has easy, I mean, Call it right now, easy, 20 to 30 years in the cellar length. So, if you were married in 2005, if you had a baby in 2005, if you're looking for a wine to put away a case of or a bottle for that special 21st, or 18th, but 21st um, birthday, or now with people getting married later, if you needed something that laid, that you know, lasted until maybe 30. This wine has that potential. The tannins are very firm and very intense, making me believe this wine will last for quite a long time. Let me give it one more shot. I like this wine. Now, remember, it's always about your palate. My palate is very different than most people's. I'm not really the biggest California Cabernet fan. I'm gonna score this wine 93 plus points on my palate. Great score, I love it. I'm convinced that 90% of you watching this show will like this wine more than this wine. I rated this one higher because my palate likes it. But not all of you like root beer more than you like Pepsi. I do. Not all of you like White Castle sliders more than you like Big Macs and Whoppers. I do. So remember, it's your palate. That being said, this is one of the better shows that we've had in a long time for quality wine. Ma, this is probably the best show of quality wine maybe in the last year, year and a half. I mean, three of these wines definitely deserve your attention. Two deserve your undivided attention. One is a little pricey. 
One is a disgusting person, mad at it. That's right though, I'm sure they're wonderful people, I can't wait to meet them, they're probably not gonna like me as much as I like them. Again though, again, if you have a very big love for oak and over the top Cali styled wines, if you drink Opus One, if you drink you know, some of these really oaky cabs, you know, Insignia, this is a better value than Insignia. So I'm just saying, you know, it's your own palate, but two spectacular wines, three wines I'd probably get on the mail, oh, little burp. Three, three wines I'd probably get on the mailing list with, one that you probably may want to, just because a lot of people are talking about it, it doesn't cost you anything, this one you need to go out and try. Question of the day, what is the best culty wine you've had in the last six months? You know, wine that was really hyped, you read about, impossible to get, either your friend got you a bottle, you got on the mailing list, you went to a restaurant, and what was your tasting note? So I want you to say something like, oh, I had the William Salem Pinot Noir, and blah, 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 I gave it an 85. Little feedback, I give you ratings, you give me some. You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world.